I'll spend half my time uh, talking about uh, trust issues. I'll tell you why I'm motivated by that. And uh, I've built an open source tool, which is Git for data. That is the second half. I'll give you a flavor of uh, uh, um, how I'm thinking uh, about it and what the interface looks like and so on. Uh, the first question, wh why do I care about trust? Um, my previous role was uh, as the head of analytics uh, for uh, a political consulting firm which was running uh, uh, Nandan Nelkani's election, among other things. On a daily basis, I used to move just through my data a hundred people left as opposed to right, based on my assessment of where the opportunities are, who are likely to be convinced and so on. And later we went on to uh, consult with uh, very large firms and uh, invariably, um, the any output, data science output that I was generating used to trigger a lot of organization change. Standard operating procedures uh, uh, were getting modified, product strategy was getting defined, um, just a lot of turmoil in, in organizations. So uh, I've been thinking about this question for almost a year, that is, we are doing all of these fancy algorithms, we are crunching a lot of data. I mean, all the data that uh, uh, we did both for the campaign and uh, later for our business clients runs into tens of GBs. Um, and uh, the problem is, uh, I would make all of these uh, recommendations, but I had a nagging question always, which is that, do I really believe it? How do I demonstrate to myself, forget other people, that this is actually meaningful because I know the real world consequences of uh, everything that I'm uh, uh, doing. So I ended up um, imposing a lot of discipline on the processes, on the people, on myself. Uh, and essentially the tool is nothing but the same discipline embedded into uh, a, a piece of uh, software. And uh, the main thing I was worried about is somebody getting fired because I was uh, producing the wrong model. And sounds familiar to you? I mean, if that is not a fear that you have, I would be concerned. Mm. Okay. Um, and um, so it, it did happen that there were a bunch of um, uh, embarrassments that I've had uh, and uh, over a period of time, which made me acutely very c uh, conscious of it. And I come to the table with a fair amount of discipline. I've been trained as an uh, academic. But the problem is that the pace at which uh, we are doing business to the number of uh, data sets that we are dealing with, number of different methodologies, the business questions that we are dealing with, uh, we, uh, in most organizations, uh, we are looking at um, uh, very iterative, laborious, uh, ad hoc, uh, and uh, chaotic uh, uh, environments. So uh, I thought that this was uh, my unique uh, experience. Maybe I'm new because I came from the systems background, uh, um, dealing with a lot of the stuff that uh, the previous uh, talk uh, was uh, discussing. And I went around um, in the last six months, um, I got on the road and started talking to data science teams, anybody that I could uh, uh, talk to, and said, these are some disasters I have had. You know, What is the truth? You tell me. You know? And these are some of the stories that I've heard. A, um, a hospitality, a data scientist in a large, uh, uh, you know, resort slash hospitality kind of uh, company saying that I have done all of these models and, you know, made my recommendations, this and that. Sometime later, I realized that the semantics of the column changed in the middle. Half the data had one semantics and the other, other half had a different semantics. Familiar? <laughs> uh, now, uh, with there is, to a last person, there is nobody who has told me that mistakes have not happened and models do go wrong. And this talk and the tool and everything is about imposing a certain discipline so that we can be confident ourselves that we are producing output that is uh, correct and beyond that uh, valuable. And some other stuff that I have seen um, uh, in a large investment bank, uh, you, you are running all of these models, uh, scoring uh, every single individual, and suddenly one day realize that you are working on negative balances. I used to think this is small stuff until I saw this uh, you know, Forbes article, uh, which made me believe that uh, people are um, uh, making modeling mistakes of the order of, I'm putting the, wrong, I'm putting the power plant in the wrong place. That is the scale at which these things are happening. And therefore, we, we need to, uh, as, a, as a community, uh, take uh, responsibility for the collateral damage uh, that we do. This is not a demonstration of our uh, intellectual macho-ness, but about our maturity 
uh, in the uh, in handling all of the data and the uh, consequences in the real world now why does uh, why does this happen right i uh, it's not so much about uh, the that the individuals doing all of this don't have integrity and so on it's just that the uh, uh, environment and the processes that we are dealing with are not yet there um and w in the last uh, uh, four years i have seen a uh, sea shift as far as uh, decision makers uh, attitude towards uh, uh, data earlier they used to not believe and now they want data to be uh, the basis for every every question we are swinging the other way and we are not ready as a as a community for all of that uh, let's talk let's drill in there are many reasons for this let's drill into a very simple uh, the fundamental uh, reason right uh, suppose i give you a C csv or somebody else gives you a csv json whatever it may be and say this is the model what is the first problem the first problem is it does not have any memory there are lots of csvs lying around in my s3 in my on my laptop and here and there i don't know where it has come from and i don't know how it is uh, related to every other uh, csv that uh, uh, that is there in our system and this is especially problematic um, uh, i have seen when there are uh, uh, mid sized teams any time you have more than about uh, three people in the data science team and you have to coordinate within each other um, i have seen that uh, the there is a fair amount of uh, chaos Uh, the second problem is that uh, there is a lot of code that is generating manipulating uh, all of these csvs we don't know which machine which commit uh, who has run it for what reason and what changes did it actually do uh, to your uh, data and we don't even know many times it is coming out of um, uh, mcmc models and these kinds of things we don't know what parameters you have chosen to actually uh, uh, run those uh, commands because all of them capture important information about the choices uh, that you are making about how how you are thinking about the problem and what uh, trade offs uh, you are making and the third problem is uh, context uh this a uh, a lot of data uh, comes to you to through uh, um, email this and that in in the email there is also two additional bits of information which says something about uh, the underlying source or what uh, uh, the dependencies are and whether they are not they can trust it and so on all that context that is uh, uh, that should have been there along with the csvs is not there and essentially what we are uh, uh, talking about moving to a a little more uh, tool uh, driven approach tool mostly to manage the complexity of the process i'm not talking about uh, the pandas i'm not talking about r but it's about the end end to end process and here um uh, my thinking is that we we are familiar we have been through this process before and it looks like a lot of software engineering all the terms that you are familiar with versions and this and that so uh, the question is uh, what is appropriate in this uh, uh, in this domain that's where i spent a bulk of uh, my time thinking Uh, while i was working i couldn't get enough time to actually build uh, the tools and embed my understanding but the moment i left the first thing that i did was to build an open source tool and uh, my goals uh, uh, were three things the the first thing is it needs to have some notion of versioning i need to know this csv is other derived from this other csv i need to be able to look through the logs and so on the entire git experience that you are familiar with but that wasn't enough i need something uh, beyond that i need A, a metadata management service i need uh, an ability to uh, track uh, to embed more information about my in, into my repository saying this is where i got my data from this is what i actually did and and so on so uh, and um, i need to be able to explicitly link i want to know precisely the commit that touched this code accessed even accessed forget uh, modified because there is a lot of sensitivity associated with uh, even uh, accessing all of this information especially if you are following some of the uh, privacy and other uh, regulations that are uh, uh, in in progress in europe and elsewhere uh, the other important thing is extensibility see everybody has a slightly different notion of what is a process that is appropriate for that uh, domain e-commerce uh, pharmacy investment banking you don't want to impose a certain way of uh, doing things any any time we have done this in the past it's this is not the first time there have been frameworks uh, that uh, uh, people have proposed nime and some others uh, the problem is that the moment you impose a certain way of doing things uh, there is nobody wants it because there is something that doesn't fit 
uh, this is uh, a new requirement that uh, uh, that wasn't very obvious initially. Once I started using this, what I realized is that um, in order to keep uh, uh, my uh, data repository up to date, I have to run lots of run lots of commands and with lots of uh, parameters all the time. So the ability to um, is, uh, implement a workflow and something that does not add to my complexity, the, the uh, usability part of uh, uh, the tool became very important for me. So I said, uh, let me not, uh, you know, imagine what the tool uh, looks like and let me discover it along the way. So what I did was I said, Git is all that I need for now. Everybody has Git and we know exactly what, what it looks like and started uh, using it on a, on a daily basis and started extending Git with whatever features that I felt were missing. And that is how we get to dgit. It's an open source MIT licensed Python uh, package. Um, you can go to uh, GitHub and uh, it, is, it is available, Python 3 only for now. Um, I uh, made this choice, it was a conscious choice that I don't want to add a new interface. I don't want to uh, implement a new experience. It should be something that you're already familiar with and you do it as a matter of uh, routine on a daily basis. And um, everything that is, it's a wrapper around Git and everything that is uh, in dgit is what is missing in, um, uh, what is required to bridge Git and uh, our data science uh, needs. And um, the architecture is, is fairly simple and non-opinionated. Anytime I felt that your choice is going to be different from my choice, I turned that into a module of some sort and embedded into it. These are two important modules that I wanted. One of the big things that was happening uh, uh, during all my uh, data work was somehow CSVs and all of these things have a way of uh, uh, losing records, some random stuff happening uh, to the records. And um, I really wanted to be sure that uh, at every point in time, my data is internally consistent. I want validation as a core capability of this dgit tool. I just need to be able to say dgit validate and it says, yes, everything is okay. And I can specify what all I consider as the dimensions of uh, validation. The second thing that I wanted uh, to do was this uh, 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 transformation. And here the, the core uh, rationale is that we need to standardize. If everybody has a different way of transforming the data, by the time 10 people are there, you're looking at 10 different uh, implementations. In order for me to even audit what I have done end to end, I need to have a language within my own team, within my own organization uh, to, to understand what I have done uh, with my data. So this is a set of uh, uh, capabilities. You say something like dig it, transform, and it goes through a bunch of uh, these things, including anonymization, encryption, whatever you specify. Okay. And there are uh, some other uh, things. Uh, if you don't like Git, you can replace it with your, uh, even this is a module, you can replace it by your favorite versioning system. I'm looking at uh, things like Instabase, which is a uh, versioning system built ground up for data. So these kinds of things will happen very soon. So I'm completely expecting this to be replaced by uh, the Instabases of the world. The S3 came about because I realized very quickly that uh, uh, there's much higher degree of sensitivity as far as data is concerned compared to your data, uh, compared to your code. You, whereas you are now comfortable putting your uh, code in uh, GitHub, you are not comfortable putting uh, your data in uh, GitHub or any of the repositories. And everybody has default S3 access. So this system, you, if you say dgit push, it goes to S3 by default. Okay. And a bunch of other instrumentation and so on. Um, this came about, this metadata thing came about because after a point I wanted to visualize my data how many repositories we have, what are all the changes that it has gone through. I'll give you a sense of it. So I built my little uh, personal uh, GitHub uh, for data. It's not open source, but I can open source if people are interested. Um, I'll show you a snippet of uh, it, how, how it looks like. So otherwise the command is actually fairly simple. Uh, you have, when you say dgit, you get uh, there are all these standard uh, commands of git that you're already familiar with, but it adds a bunch of uh, new new commands. And um, you can find all of this information uh, online, but I want you to uh, just focus on one command, which is the auto mode of operation. 
and uh, uh, this is inspired by Firebase. This was one change that I did to the Git experience. So as I was saying, it was becoming too complicated for me to uh, manage the command lines and go through this 10 times or 50 times uh, a day. So I added this auto mode in which it intel intelligently figures out, dgit intelligently figures out what it needs to do. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll show you an example of it. Let me walk you through a sim simple example. So let's say you, you downloaded uh, the company database from the MCA. You put it in a directory. You just say dgit auto. Uh, it wakes up and it realizes that I don't know uh, which repository this uh, data should be, th this uh, particular CSV should be part of, and it asks some questions to you. Where should I, uh, what should the username be, repo name, this and that, and where should I sto be storing it? And it creates uh, this uh, a preferences file called dgit.json. This is directly inspired by Firebase, and I loved the whole, whole thing. And the moment, from next time onwards, whenever you say digit auto, it picks up all of these uh, preferences from uh, digit.json. You don't have to do it, uh, you don't have to specify again. And you can embed a whole lot of uh, 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 rules uh, into this, uh, uh, into the digit.json. Um, so coming back, uh, what digit.auto does is, it first realizes that there is no repository, creates the repository, creates a metadata tracking file, stuffs it with all the um, information like the commit information that I was talking about, and uh, comes back and says, I'm done. You can, it's actually a standard Git repository, you can go to a particular directory and you'll find what, what it is storing. All of this is completely transparent. Um, the uh, what, the more interesting thing that happens is, let's say you go through your modeling and you somehow change uh, this file. You just say digit auto. It scans your entire directory recursively and sees what has changed. And then goes back, uh, looks at the data set, uh, that, uh, your repository, and says that these are all the things that have changed. And uh, it also computes the differences, saying that certain columns have changed or certain rows have changed, keys in JSON have changed, you know, those kinds of things. It is it's pretty... I'm done. So there's a bunch of other uh, capabilities in uh, dgit itself. Uh, I have implemented some plugins. Uh, you can go through, uh, uh, go through this. Um, I'm mainly, the, the reason I took the effort to come here and talk to you is that I want us to have a conversation on uh, the tool and the usability and uh, uh, collaborate on developing a more structured approach to manage the end-to-end -end process. So all of these are outstanding uh, uh, requirements, uh, if you will. And pretty much the whole, all this documentation is available on the GitHub. Uh, you can go through it. Uh, it's only Python 3 for now. Um, so uh, that is all uh, that I had. Um, I'll give you a 10 minute, pl 10 second plug of uh, what we do. We are a data science uh, automation company. Um, our uh, first product is called Ask Scribble. Uh, the idea is very simple. You punch in a bunch of keywords. What you get is you get back is SQL. Let me leave it at that. Uh, somewhat mysterious, and uh, uh, feel free to uh, talk to me later.